and I'll get into this more in a second. Now, why is it so good? It has to do with this omega-6, omega-3 balance. You've probably heard this. Here's how the line goes. Oh, everybody's eating too many omega-6s. Therefore, we need to balance out the omega-6s with omega-3s. You've heard this, right? This is the selling. You didn't hear this? <laughs> Most of you people have heard this. This is the selling point. We need to balance out the omega-6s. There's too many. Well, folks, if you're eating omega-6s, which are poisonous, by the way, this is margarine, you're not going to fix what's wrong by taking an omega-3. Two wrongs do not make a right. The way to fix the omega-6 imbalance is stop eating omega-6s. Don't put these things in your body. They are poisonous. You cannot fix one poison by adding another poison. So what's the problem with omega-6s? Omega-6s are pro-inflammatory. And these are things like canola oil, corn oil, so soybeans, safflower, sunflower. It, I don't care if they're organic, free-range, come from Hawaii or wherever it comes from. These things are all extremely pro-inflammatory and cause all sorts of disease. And if you look at most products, buy a loaf of white bread. It's probably got one of these things. Buy cookies, crackers, anything, and it's got this stuff in it. Why is that in there? Because it's cheap. Now, I'm going to ask, we get a little quiz now. Where does soybean oil come from? Soybeans, right? Where does safflower oil come from? Safflowers, right? Where does corn oil come from? Okay, here's the biggie now. Where does canola oil come from? Canada. From where? Canada. Canada. Rapeseed. Okay. <laughs> Babies, yes. No, but there's this myth out there that canola oil is really good for you. It comes from Canada. It's a brand name. It's made from rapeseed, which is toxic, and they process, they process it quite a bit. And they say, well, it's good for you because it's low in saturated fat and it's high in monounsaturates. That does not make it good for you. They're trying to sell you something. And this, so just beware of, oh, but it's organic canola oil, doc. So now these things cause inflammation and these things reduce inflammation. Flax, hemp, fish oils, DHA, EPA. So doc, isn't, aren't they good if they reduce inflammation? Well, I mean, you can say that that's good and you can use them as a drug. Don't get me wrong, okay? Let's just go back here a second. Will fish oil lower your blood pressure? Maybe. So it's possible it could raise your blood pressure. Will it prevent heart disease in the short term? Maybe. Will it lower your cholesterol? Maybe. Will it lower your hydrocholesterol? Maybe. Will it help your arthritis pain? Maybe. Okay? I'm not saying that these things don't... These, there are really studies that show this, but these are all short-term studies. And what's happening there is that most people are walking around with way too many omega-6s in their system. Why? Because it's in all these food products that we're not aware of. So now you take omega-3s, the fish oil, and voila, you feel better because you've balanced out these things. And just like that gentleman in the back asked, well, shouldn't I take extra zinc then if I'm, or extra copper if I'm going to take extra zinc? Well, it's the same thing. Well, if I'm going to eat omega-6s, shouldn't I take omega-3s? Well, you can, but in the long term, you're going to get too much omega-6s and too much omega-3s in your system and this stuff is really fragile. Get rid of the omega-6s. This stuff is really, really poisonous. Yeah. Now let me just explain to you a little bit of, of what polyunsaturates and monounsaturates and unsaturated fats are polyunsaturated fats because they, they fry and they burn easily. For example, butter is, is a stable oil, right? We've heard this before. Coconut oil is very stable. Why? Because it, it has no double bonds. It's completely saturated. So these oils are very, very stable and very sturdy which makes them very healthy. So butter is actually a very healthy thing to consume, as well as coconut oil. Now you probably heard, well, isn't that bad for you? Won't that raise your cholesterol? That's a whole nother talk, okay? But when you start getting these double bonds in there, these double bonds are very fragile. They're susceptible to oxidative stress. In fact, this is actually where oxidation occurs. It occurs on the double bonds of fatty acids. If we didn't have these fatty acids, we could not create energy in our systems, in our cells, we wouldn't be around. So we need a certain amount of them. And they, but they need to be controlled because too many, fat, too many double bonds in there will cause excessive oxidative stress. These are very, very fragile molecules. And if you buy fish oil, they usually come in dark containers. They usually tell you to keep them in the refrigerator. You've probably heard that, that you shouldn't cook with... Why? Because the light will actually 
rancidify or oxidize these things, and the heat will do this. And some of the new, newer products out there, they, they start to say, oh, well, we, we put antioxidants in to our omega-3s to keep them stable. Well, it may keep them stable in the bottle, but as soon as you put these things into your body, they will start to suck out the antioxidants of your body. It'll drop your vitamin C levels, vitamin E, CoQ10, all of these things will start to plummet way down. And you cannot, and I can show you the literature on this, you cannot possibly take enough antioxidants to protect you from the oxidative damage caused by, these, by the um, polyunsaturated oils. So if you're consuming omega-6s, in fact, if you were coming to see me as a patient, the first thing I do is I go through your diet and I ask you, what are you eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? What kind of oils do you cook with? What do you drink, etc.? And recommendation number one is get rid of the omega-6s out of your diet these are contributory to every single chronic degenerative disease out there. High blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, stroke, cancer, arthritis. And you may, you know, just think about it for a second. How many things are epidemic right now in terms of diseases? Is arthritis epidemic? Of course. Asthma, high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease. Name any single disease and every single one is epidemic at the same time. Well, why is that? Well, nobody knows. That's the answer that we get. Let me tell you, there are people that know. I know. I'm a nobody. Okay, so you can say nobody knows. I don't know everything, but I can tell you that these things are contributing to our demise. And the food corporations, they don't care. They just want to sell you cheap food. They replaced butter and coconut oil about 50 to 60 years ago with these vegetable oils to make a higher profit. They vilified butter back in the, in the 60s to sell margarine. Stuff is poisonous. And I don't care what they call it. They, now that it's very fancy. You go in the supermarket, they got all these fancy names with the word healthy or balanced or, or smart. Okay, if your food has the word smart or healthy or balanced in it, I would avoid these foods. They're trying to trick you. Okay, so... Let's continue with these omega-3s. Now, how about snake oil? Has anybody ever heard of snake oil? Well, of course, right? Huh? Voodoo. It's voodoo? In voodoo, I've heard of it. Okay, we've all heard of snake oil, right? Snake oil is bad, right? You wouldn't want to take snake oil, right? Shysters try to sell you snake oil because they're going to tell you it's good for this and good for that, right? Snake oil, in the past, was being recommended for many different symptoms and conditions. High blood pressure, heart disease, high cholesterol, high triglycerides, arthritis, good for your brain, good for your skin, good for your eyes, allergies. It was good for everything. Well, guess what, folks? Snake oil and fish oil are the same exact thing. They are. I'm not making this up. Fish swim in the water. They have lots of omega-3s in their system. Snakes swim in the water. They have a lot of omega-3s in their system. This is not something that was made up. People used snake oil, the Chinese in particular, for centuries. And when the Chinese came to this country, they, they started selling snake oil to people. And they told them it was good for all these wonderful things. And the people took the snake oil. And for a little while, guess what? They may have felt a little better for a while. And then all their symptoms came back. And this is where this, this is just more snake oil came from. It's the same exact thing. So what are the long-term consequences of pharmaceutical doses of fish oil? It will create oxidative stress. It will age you prematurely. It can cause cancer. It can cause all sorts of stuff. It is very, very... And I know some, of these, some people sitting here going, oh my God, I don't like this doctor, okay? Because <laughs> my doctor prescribed this, and he's, I'm telling you that we learn nothing in medical school about nutrition. We learn how to identify diseases and treat diseases. What I'm telling you here, I did not learn in medical school. Okay, we learned very little biochemistry. We learned, we learned basically how to identify, how to name these diseases, and then how to treat these diseases with drugs. So your doctor that's recommending these things doesn't know any better.